driving a Hyundai Ionic. Ionic? I think that's what it's called. A uh, hybrid. And uh, I really like it. I like the styling of it from the outside. I like the interior of it. It's a, it's a good looking car outside and in. So, when you get in the car, it's got an electronic seat, up, down, forward, backwards, the rear of it, it's got an electronic lumbar support, and when I first got in it, and I was checking it out and doing my uh, appraisal, I must have hit the wrong button. I haven't found the button since. I was actually doing something on the central console when it happened. Uh, and I certainly am not going to look for that when I'm driving along. But I must have touched something and suddenly <laughs> the seat turned into a bed. <laughs> Which um, I'm wondering, because I'm delivering this car to a taxi driver, I'm wondering if that's why he bought it. No taxi drivers often, if they're waiting a long time, they like to have a little snooze. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of things about it are like a good, high-quality car. Um, the seat, when you stop the engine and open the door, the seat moves back so that it's easier to get in and out of the car. You get back in, it goes to the last position, last driving position it was at. So it automatically goes back to your driving position. Uh, so, yeah, nice seat. Here's a f something that you very rarely see on a car of this sort of price range and quality hasn't just got heated seats it's got air conditioned seats as well fantastic so that's a it's a really comfortable car to, to be in um, the dashboard uh, is pretty simple hybrids are always a little bit more involved than just a regular petrol engine because it likes to show you all this battery stuff and what have you. I'm not sure if you can switch it to only go on battery or if it's constantly a hybrid. Um, but it shows you your miles per gallon. This car's doing 65 miles to the gallon and I'm not hanging around. Well, 64 miles to the gallon and I'm not hanging around. If you drive it a little bit more carefully, I'm sure you can get 65, 68 to the gallon out of it, which is pretty damn good. Um, so the central display is the speedometer, shows you the miles left in the tank, the range. Uh, it shows you how much you're doing in miles an hour on the dial and kilometers an hour digitally. The computer part of it, instead of being in central, is actually on the right hand side. It shows you what the battery charge is, your miles per gallon, you can flip through it, see the engine temperature, uh, the, your driving style, how much of it is economical. So I've only driven 12% economical, 59% um, normal, and 29% aggressive. And uh, the aggressive bit up until recently was much, much lower than that. I just happened to flick it into the sport mode to see what it was like. But most of the time I've been driving on the economy. And the performance is perfectly adequate uh, driving it on economy. So why not drive on economy all the time? Uh, it shows you the charge. I'm not quite sure what all that's about. <laughs> Honest. Center console, nice big built-in display, not something that's tacked on looking like an afterthought. Um, climate controls, simple, easy to read. And it's got a single button so that you can have the climate control driver only, which is pretty good. So if you're driving on your own, you 
know, you, you have all the focus of the climate control on yourself. So it's really, really nice. In the middle, you've got a what I'm guessing is a charging pad for um, wireless charging of your telephone. You've got the automatic gear lever. The controls for your heat, speed camera ahead, air condition, see all that sort of thing. Uh, interestingly, it's only got one cup holder, uh, which has got a couple of spring mounts in it to hold things tight. There is another compartment next to it, which I guess you could use for your cup or your can or whatever. Um, it's basically just a compartment, but it's about the right size. The armrest. It's usable, it's not too far back like you often find. On the door, that armrest is usable as well. So overall, a really nice car. Now it's not the build quality that you'd get on say a German car, a BMW or an Audi or, or something like that. And in a way, that's to your advantage. The reason for that is in a powerful, really good quality car, it's very easy to get speed creep. You really have no sensation of speed. So in a good quality, top of the line car, 90, 95 miles an hour feels the same as 60 miles an hour does. You can't tell any difference in terms of the way the car feels and your sensations. You can only tell the difference visually. This car, and don't take this the wrong way, you feel like you're going as fast as you are in this car. So if you're doing 50 miles an hour, it feels like 50 miles an hour. If you're doing 70 miles an hour, it feels like 70 miles an hour. If you're doing 90 miles an hour, it feels like 90 miles an hour. You're not gonna accidentally drive at 90 miles an hour which is very easy to do in a, in a higher quality car. So in a way, that's an advantage. Uh, and talking about speed, the speedometer, again, is, I guess it's designed to protect your, your driving license because at 70 miles an hour indicated on a sat-nav, which is more accurate, it's 75 on the dashboard. So the speedometer is pretty optimistic, I would say. Uh, at the back, you've got sort of a double section, glass section on the rear tailgate. So it means that uh, rear visibility is very, very good, including really close to the car, because it is quite a slope, quite a sporty slope on the back window. And... Um, all in all, well, good place for your left and rest foot. Uh, it's got an interesting um, parking brake in that it's like you used to get in a 1950s car. And, uh, it's a lever, it's a foot lever. So that's quite interesting that they've decided to do that. Um, and that's it. That's the car nice car I like it a lot and uh, if you're looking for a very economical car that's very stylish looks nice oh yeah when you put it into sport mode the whole dashboard changes it's pretty cool so normal driving you've got a speedometer in the center of the dashboard with your range in the center of that and the speeding kilometers now and your um, fuel gauge and then you flick the little uh, little um, gear shift thing over to sport boom and the colors change sport comes on rev counter comes up And it certainly does it. It still doesn't accelerate fantastic, to be fair. It's not a sports car. But it goes pretty good. So that's my quick report.
not so quick, I think, this time I'm grabbing it on a bit. On the Hyundai Ionic. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. <laughs> Drive safe.